Six Nations and Rugby Championship, formerly the Tri-Nations, how do those results translate into Rugby World Cup success? I'm not just talking about winning the Rugby World Cup, uh, but also just how well do these teams do in the Rugby World Cup generally? If you win the Six Nations or if you win the Rugby Championship, are you more likely to go on to a semi-final, more likely to go on to a final, and what are your chances of winning it? I'll go through from 87 to 2015. Uh, obviously the rugby championship and tri nations doesn't have as long a history as the six nations or previously five nations. Uh, so the first few world cups don't have any Southern hemisphere competition to compare to. Uh, but I'll go through the both as they kind of come through. And at the end, we'll have a look at kind of the, the summary on the odds, basically the probabilities on historical, uh, records how likely these teams are to go on uh, and perform in the Rugby World Cup. So we'll start with 1987. New Zealand win that Rugby World Cup. They defeat France in the final. Uh, Wales defeat Australia in the third place playoff. So those were the four semi-finalists. And that year there's a connection between Six Nations success and Rugby World Cup success. Because uh, France in 1987 were Grand Slam winners of the Five Nations. Uh, they didn't win it, but they made the final. So that's a pretty good, a pretty good shift from uh, from the French to to go on and make the final, especially away from home. 1987 Rugby World Cup, very different affair from what it is nowadays. I mean, I was only a young fellow at the time, but you know, still amateur. And if you've seen the opening ceremony, it, it looks like almost like a glorified kind of high school event. But uh, as I said, very different time for rugby. Rugby has changed a lot uh, since that competition. 1991, uh, Australia defeat England in the final. Uh, the semis saw New Zealand and Scotland go out, so New Zealand defeated Scotland in the, the third place game. Uh, again, connection between six nations, or as it was, five nations success and uh, World Cup success in that England were Grand Slam winners, went on to make the final. So the first two Rugby World Cups, Grand Slam winners go on to contest the final but lose uh, to a Southern Hemisphere, uh, Southern Hemisphere opponent. 1995, uh, it's an all Southern Hemisphere affair in the final. So South Africa beat New Zealand in the final. France and England are the semi-finalists with France taking third. Uh, England were Grand Slam winners that year. So that's the first time that the Six Nations champion didn't go on to make the final. Uh, France, who were the other semi-finalists, were third that year. Uh, but yeah, again, none of the Northern Hemisphere teams made the final that year. 1999, uh, Australia get their second Rugby World Cup. They defeat France uh, in the final. The other two semi-finalists were South Africa and New Zealand. South Africa, who ended up beating New Zealand in that third place game. Uh, this one's a very distinct break from from that record of Six Nations and uh, World Cup. And that Scotland, what's well, Five Nations? I keep saying Six Nations. Scotland won the Five Nations that year. They went out in the quarterfinals to New Zealand. So championship winner to quarterfinal loser, a bit of a big turnaround. Uh, and interestingly, kind of a very French thing to do, France were fifth in the Five Nations, and yet they went on to make the final. So it's kind of not all that surprising for them. Uh, 1999 is also interesting because that is the first time we see the Tri-Nations in the same year. That year, New Zealand win the Tri-Nations, uh, can only make the semi-final. Australia, who were second in the Tri-Nations, go on to win. And South Africa, who were third, uh, also semi-finalists, so mm, no win-for-win win tandem record there. 2003, uh, England defeat Australia in the final. New Zealand defeat France in the third place match. So those are your four teams who made the semis. Uh, direct connection between Six Nations success and World Cup success because England, Six Nations winners, Grand Slam winners in that year go on to win the World Cup. Success, success, success. Uh, not quite the same true with the Tri-Nations of that year because New Zealand were the winners of the Tri-Nations. Can only make the semi-finals, they make third. Australia, who are second, get second uh, again. So they're second in both competitions that year. 2007, South Africa defeat England in the final. Argentina defeat France for third. So those are your four semi-finalists. Um, no direct connection uh, between Six Nations success and... World Cup because France who are first make the semis which is I guess decent but ideally they'd want to make the final uh, England who make the final finished third so that kind of they bumped up from from a poor start to the year uh, New Zealand 
have the ultimate poor year because they were Tri-Nations winners again that year and went out in the quarterfinals to the aforementioned French. Uh, Australia, who were second in the Tri-Nations, didn't even make the semis. And South Africa, who finished bottom of the Tri-Nations that year, go on to win the Rugby World Cup. So, again, no clear connection there between those two competitions. Uh, that year, South Africa did, uh, for their touring side, send a bit of a rotated squad. There was a bit of controversy about that at the time, but New Zealand were also experimenting with rotation. So, that was a thing back in those days. Still is now, to a degree. Uh, 2011, New Zealand defeat France in the final. Uh, Australia defeat Wales in the third place game. So those are your four teams who made the semis. Um, the Six Nations has no bearing on this because uh, it was England who won the Six Nations that year, knocked out in the quarterfinals by France. Uh, Wales who made the semis were fourth, and uh, France who made the final was second. So I guess that's a slight connection. Uh, as for rugby championship, Australia won the rugby championship, or as it was Tri Nations then. Um, they made the semis. New Zealand was second, and yet made the final. So that's two years where we've seen. The rugby championship was, yeah, two years. Well, it's the third in total. Uh, yeah, we've seen the team who came second in the Tri-Nations actually go on to win the Rugby World Cup. 2015 continues that same theme, uh, but Six Nations first because uh, New Zealand defeat Australia in the the final. Uh, South Africa defeat Argentina in the, in the third place match. So it's an all Southern Hemisphere affair. So Six Nations, Ireland were first out in the quarterfinals. Uh, England who were second out in the pool stages. So... No connection there from success to success. Uh, but for the the rugby championship, as it finally was that year, uh, Australia were first, they made the final, New Zealand was second, also made the final. So the top two made the top two, but they just swapped places in terms of the results. So yeah, that's year by year, a rundown. How does this kind of compute in summary? Well, if you win the rugby championship, formerly the, uh, the Tri-Nations, you're pretty well sorted to make a... A semi-final, at least in a Rugby World Cup, because four out of five times that has happened. The only time a team has won the Rugby Championship or Tri-Nations and not gone on to make at least a semi-final was the All Blacks in 2007. What about Rugby Championship and going on to make the final? This is where the odds shift dramatically. It's only happened once, and that was Australia in 2015. The only Rugby Championship winner, Tri-Nations, uh, to make the final, and they lost it. So, in terms of winning the final, it's never happened. Nobody's ever won the Tri-Nations or Rugby Championship and gone on to win the Rugby World Cup. It's never happened. So, there's a little bit of a, I guess, curse thing about winning the Rugby Championship in, in that World Cup year, which I guess we'll have to wait and see if that rings true this year. What about the Six Nations? There's a bit more uh, of the history there because the Six Five Nations has been going a lot, lo uh, lot longer. If you win the Six Nations, you're better than 50-50 to make a semi-final. It's happened 62.5% of the time, so 5 out of 8 basically. Uh, three teams have gone on to win that 5 or 6 Nations and not make a semi-final. That's Scotland in 99, England in 11, and Ireland in 15. Six Nations winner to win, or to, to make the final of the Rugby World Cup. It's happened three out of eight times, so slightly worse than a 50-50 record. 37.5%. Uh, and Six Nations winner to go on and win the Rugby World Cup. It's only happened once out of eight times, and that was England in 2003. So 12.5% chance, not so hot. However, we can have a look at that in terms of Grand Slams, because Wales got the Grand Slam this year, so... If you not only win the Six Nations, but get the Grand Slam, does that increase your odds? Definitely for a semi-final, three out of four times has the Grand Slam winner gone on to make at least the semi-final. Um, in terms of the... Oh, sorry, that's final. I read it the wrong order. Semi-final is 100%. Every Grand Slam winner has gone on to make the final. So that's France in 87, England in 91, England in 90... Five made the semis, and uh, England in 2003 made the semis. Also, to the final, 75% chance. Uh, so the only ones who didn't make the final as a Grand Slam winner was England in 1995. Every other time they've gone on to make it. Grand Slam winner to win the Rugby World Cup is, um, is only just the once, and that's England again. So if you're a Wales fan, you have to look at that and say 75% chance... 
well, at least his history tells you 75% chance of making the final as Grand Slam winner. That's a pretty nice looking number, 100% chance of making the semi. That's a pretty nice number. Um, but then the final 33, perhaps not quite as, uh, as appealing, but then rugby championship to win the final, zero. So yeah, Rugby World Cup is not too far away. I think we're all pretty excited about that. If you haven't noticed, I am. I keep making videos about Rugby World Cup because I want it to start. But um, yeah, you guys have a look at these historical results. How well do you think they translate into current uh, current state? How likely do you think Wales are to go on and have success at the Rugby World Cup? Do you think France can do a thing where they finished relatively poorly in the Six Nations and then go on to do great things? Uh, rugby championship is still not over yet. There's still one round to go, but uh, South Africa are in the driver's seat there. Do you think this is a curse, or do you think some team will finally break that this year? But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.